Good evening, friends. Stephen Bernan with Israeli News Live. Joel Osteen's church in a breaking news story today. Uh, a shooter, a female shooter between the ages of 30 to 35, what the police chief here to the right there uh, mentions in this uh, broadcast here, speaks about this woman comes in and with a long rifle and begins shooting inside the church. A 57-year-old man was shot in the leg. Don't know if it's crossfire or her firing and also a five-year-old child in critical condition tonight. Uh, two uh, off-duty officers that were employed by Joel Osteen there at the church there uh, w did take down the, the lone gun person there, from what we understand, just the lone gunman there. And, uh, and then yet another story we're going to be looking at real quick here, too, I want to share with you. <clears throat> this sheriff right here, uh, reported about the meeting in Washington, D.C., and what FBI officials are saying that we can expect coming uh, in a very soon near future here in this country. A very serious situation that I'm seeing there, and quite frankly, very disturbing for me because I really see New World Order written all over this, and many good law-abiding citizens falling right into the trap. We're going to be talking about that here in just a moment, along with uh, the situation there at Joel Osteen's church. Let me jump back to Joel Osteen's church here, and uh, we will play a little bit about what the police chief had to say, as well as the I'm mayor. I'm John Whitmire, mayor of Houston, Texas, and I stand before you today, unfortunately, to report on a tragedy that occurred just before two o'clock at Lakewood Church as they were in between services. I'll leave the details of the first responders reaction in a timely fashion to the Chiefs Fenner and Chief Pena. I want Houstonians and surrounding We'll jump forward to the Chief please real quick. Um. I hate advertisements like this here. Sorry about that. Local, our state, our federal partners. Um, I just want to give some detail um, here, but pray for everybody that's, that's involved. Uh, the victims who I'll discuss here and, and the, the unsaid victims, those individuals that came here to worship today and had to witness this. But rest assured, in this city, we're going to stand strong and we're going to move forward. So approximately at 1.53 p.m., a female, approximately 30, 35 years old, entered the property on the west side here in the parking lot of Lakewood Church. She entered the building. She was armed with a long rifle and a trench coat with a backpack accompanied by a small child, approximately four to five years old. Uh, once she entered, uh, at some point she began to fire. I want to compliment the off-duty officers who were working extra employment here. One TABC agent, four years of service, 38 years old. An HPD off-duty officer, 28 years old two years of safe service. Both officers, officer and agent, uh, engaged, striking the female. Uh, she's deceased here on the scene. Unfortunately, the five-year-old kid was hit and is in critical condition at our local hospital. That was a 57-year-old man who didn't have anything to do with it, I don't think was shot in the leg. He's seeking treatment in the hospital. So let's all... <clears throat> Such a tragedy there. Uh, certainly our heart, uh, hearts go out in prayers for uh, everyone involved in this situation there. And uh, regardless, I know different people have different op opinions uh, regarding the pastor, uh, Joel Osteen, but I don't think this is, of course, the time uh, for that type of issue. In the first place, we certainly would join with them uh, in, in praying for those, uh, especially as the chief of police, Chief Finner, says there, it's what the, the people that had to witness that go through as well. Uh, that's a very tragic thing to have to see somebody be gunned down, especially inside of a church. Uh, so very troubling and very sad indeed. So our hearts and condolences do go out to Joel Osteen and his uh, people there in uh, Texas there at Lakewood Church in Texas. 
This, though, is <clears throat> very alarming to me, and I have reported to you guys on multiple occasions uh, about this situation, about their coming attacks inside the nation here. Now, I thought initially we would see that by the end of last year, 2023, but uh, it, it even after this sheriff meeting with the FBI uh, in Washington, D.C., along with many other sheriffs that were there, uh, we're finding out they're getting ready for something coming, uh, a disturbance. As they com as he compares it here, the FBI uh, uh, head that speaks to them in this meeting, the likes of what happened with Hamas in Israel. And so my question is, is the stage being set? Clearly, what happened in Israel, we already know, was a setup. The response... And the sheriff goes into this. He said the only people that responded initially were the police. He calls it the sheriffs. Israel has, even the police force, by the way, in Israel is a military force. He said that they have no way of contacting the military. Well, I know the sheriff doesn't understand Israel very well when I listen to this. All branches of service in Israel, including the police force, are military force services. In fact, when you're doing your two-year mandatory service, you can serve in the police force as part of that mandatory duty. They all work hand-in-hand -hand together. And the military is just as deployed, if not more so, than the police are deployed throughout the entire country. Something definitely was amiss that day on October the 7th. But he likens it to that situation in Israel that we could have coming here very soon. And I can tell you right now, now this is just my opinion, of course. I feel strongly that Donald Trump will become the president of the United States once again. And he and Netanyahu... Who knows? Maybe they'll liken them to the two witnesses. Talk about a new world order. Talk about a Noahide law going down. And even Mike has mentioned about Israel being disarmed. Well, I could see them being disarmed after this is all over. Sure. But it'll play right into the hands of a new world order. Especially when they say, well, after all, God said we would turn our swords into plowshares and the law would go from, from Jerusalem. Not realizing that happened 2,000 years ago. Let's listen to what the sheriff has to say here. The President of the United States refuses to meet with the sheriffs. He also refuses to meet with the police chiefs of the United States. They have a hierarchy also. He refuses to meet with them to talk about border issues or talk about crime that's going on because of the border issue. We were also told by Mr. Ray, the FBI director, that there are more red flags going off now than before 9-11, okay? When I say red flags, meaning people that are here in this country that are wanting to do harm to us. We were also explained we're, in the, we're bombing two countries right now, two countries. These people do not like us before this started. There's thousands of people here from other countries, 160 different countries. They're here not to be our friends. Some of them are coming because they're wanting to come here to the best country in the world, the way we see it. Some are coming here to do harm to us. And we were told by the FBI director, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We were also told five sheriffs went to Israel five weeks after the attack. The only thing that saved the Israelis, the government, was the local police. They were outgunned, outmanned. They came over. The Palestinians did. They came over. They killed, raped. The sheriffs were there. They talked to the police. The local police or what saved that country. You can't just call, even in Israel, you can't just call the military up and they're gonna be there, okay? They went house to house, raping, killing. The Israeli police 
when our guys got there, the sheriffs, said they just don't hate us. They hate you guys equally. And the same people that train them are the same people that train people to hate us. The FBI director said when 9-11 hit, there's more red flags now than them. So, and he said, these are people that want to kill us and do harm to us. Now, so you're wondering, I want everybody to know what I know. I can't tell you everything, but I want the public to know that we are in a terrible way right now. The United States, and I'm going to get to the local, the United States, we're on the defense. You can't be just defense and not have an offense. We have no offense. We're just defense. We're absorbing these attacks. We're in other countries. We're supplying them with weapons. We're supplying them with our, our, our treasure, our money, and we're not doing much back home. <clears throat> I'll kind of pa uh, pause it right there for now. I'll leave a link in the description below for you so you can watch this in, in its entirety. And, and let's face it, you know, he even talks in there, he's going to say how that they've got uh, uh, citizens that are volunteering, but they can only train 30 at a time. This is a, a U.S., I think, involvement. They're never going to get the people trained enough in time. And the problem is, he said, but the sheriffs now, they're all carrying rifles in their vehicles. I'm sure he's talking about assault rifles. And he said they also carry backpacks with plenty of magazines because they're preparing for a real battle in the streets that could go down. You know, and, and believe me, you know, hats off. And, and, and even the police in Israel that confronted the Hamas terrorists that came in, I agree with him. They're the only ones that saved the day that day, outgunned, outnumbered, etc. That's very true. No doubt about it. They're the only ones that responded. But for the military, they could have definitely responded, and they normally would have responded. As soon as that perimeter fence was, was disturbed, there would have been 50 Jeeps on site. As you heard uh, Rabbi uh, Mitzrahi say in his own video, an Israeli born, after he talked to some of the former heads of intelligence in Israel. So no. We know that that was a setup, but unfortunately, just like in this country here, many good sheriffs like this sheriff right here probably has no idea what type of setup is going on in this country and really who's behind those setups. It's not the good people, not the good guys, but they're doing it all in order to bring about a one world global order. And bringing down this country is number one on their list. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. By the way, uh, for those of you that did not get the link to the Zoom meeting tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, it's fixing to hop, fixing to go live here very soon in about, well, about 15 minutes or so. Uh, I'll put it in here just in case, even if you're late coming in, want to join in with us there because we know there's a lot of you that have that have become uh, customers and you'd like to know more about the products there. Join in. Uh, we are getting fabulous testimonies. Uh, in fact, right now, I would not be able to do this video if it wasn't that I used that, what they call an Eon patch because I have such a massive knot in my back uh, between the shoulder blade. I don't know how I got that thing in there, but it has caused me severe pain all day long. And my wife put it on, and within about 15 minutes, the pain subsided. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you, and good evening.